Hello, my name is Abraham Mosori, and in this video, I will take you through the topic logic. So let's start. Definition So, logic is a science that studies what the principles of correct reasoning. So, here we will be given some set of statements, and then we are um, supposed to reason and say that those statements are true or either false. Okay, so that is our task here in this topic. All right, so. Um, logic is actually divided into two types or two groups. The first one is propositional logic, and the second one is what predicate logic. All right. So let's look at the propositional logic. So this deals with a statement that that is what declarative sentence, which is either true or false, but not both. Okay. So you'll be provided with statement in this type of logic. A statement will be given something like the number two is a prime number. Okay, so it's just a statement. It's a declarative statement that it declares itself to be either true or false. And two is indeed a prime number. So this statement is all true. Okay, so this type of logic is called propositional logic. Let's look at the predicate logic. This one deals with a statement with variables in, in it, which requires the value of what the variable before the truth value can be determined. Okay. So I'll take that again. It is with a statement with variables in it, which requires the value of the variable before the truth value can be determined. So example is this. Let's P of S denotes X greater than two. Okay, so you'll be you, you've been given um, a statement where your X is greater than two. So before this, this P of X, which is defined as this will be true. We need to know that the values of what X so if I say if I pick x to be what one, we mean one is greater than two, which is false. Okay, so before for the predicate logic, before you can determine the the, the truth value behind it, you need to be given some set of numbers first, or some set of either numbers or any data that will satisfy what your your um, relation. Okay, so truth value. You see, we made mention of what truth value here. you are supposed to understand what we call truth value okay all right so truth value the truth value of a statement is said to be true if the statement is true and it's said to be false f capital f if the statement is false all right so this is very simple so the truth truth or the force of a statement okay is what you call the truth value of that statement okay so let's continue operations on logics we have some operations on logics that we are supposed to know we have two types we have what a unary operation and this type of operation acts on a single statement to give a single truth value all right so this operator actually takes only one statement okay the operator is called negation or not operator so yeah, we'll do example on this and then you understand why we are saying it acts on a single um, statement okay then we have the other one to the binary operation this type of operations combines two or more statements to form single compound statement to give a truth or sorry to give a single truth value all right so it combines two or more statements to form a single compound statement like i will say a first statement now see another statement then these operators the ones that we call binary operators they will combine the two of the statements for us to know that either the combination of them will give us a truth a t as a truth value or f an f as a truth value okay so the conjunction and the conjunction is called what and and the disjunction or are part of what we call the binary operations they are plenty okay so number of truth values okay so if let's say i'm giving some set of statements how do i know that i need two number of truth values something like if i'm i'm giving let's say a single statement like this giving just a single statement either the statement is true or false so how many truth values here we have only one of the t and only one of the f so we have only two okay giving two statements okay then if i'm to consider the possible combinations of the two statements either the first statement is true and the second statement is true okay so if i'm to consider them i have to consider each statement single 
like i consider the first statement to be true now consider the second one to be true then i'll i'll um operate or I'll, I'll i'll just act my operator or call for my operator and then we use on it and see the final answer that we will get okay or either the first statement is true and the second is false then i consider it and see or either the first statement is false and the second is true or both are false okay so in doing this you see that when you are given two statements you get how many of the t's you get one here two here three here four here you get how many of the fours you get one two three four so in other words we have four different of two truth values we have two of the you know two of the truths being for the first statement and two of the false being for the first statement the same thing happens to the second one so if you want to know the number of truth values in a simple or giving some statements then you need to count then you can even count the number of the truths the t's in it and then you'll be okay okay so we have four different truth values okay so if if i'm giving a single statement like i said it's either you have true or false so you can be either true then the false can come down there so we have only two truth values and here if i give if i'm giving two statements we have four truth values okay so if you continue considering different number of statements given you will see that the number of possible truth values is given by 2 to the power and where n is the number of statements given okay so you should keep this formula in mind if let's say um, n is equal to um, the number of statements given is let's say three we will be given let's see a statement denoted as p and a statement denoted as q and another one to be let's say r the number of possible truth values which we can combine is what two to the power the number of statements which is three which will give me what eight okay so let's start with this here so example if you have three statements then p q r then we will have two to the power three which is equal to eight number of truth values okay all right so let's continue logical operators so basically we will deal with five operators giving us um, the negation that is a not which acts on a single statement that is this is a symbol sorry this is a symbol for it okay not p so if i'm giving a statement p then i have not of p okay you have the conjunction that is the and that acts on two statements that is the p and q this is a symbol for and okay and the disjunction that is or this acts on two statements and this written as what p or q the symbol is this one like a v big v okay and the implication which acts on two statements and so the implication is we, we read it as what p right um this is what right arrow right so p right arrow q but we don't say that we say p implies q so we read as what if p then q or p implies q okay then the by implication that asks also it asks on two statements and this one happens where you are looking at here and then you are looking at the back as well so it's like p if and only if q or p if q any of these if you read it any of this i we will accept it okay so note there are other operators which are obtained by the negation of the basic operator that is nand operator is the negation of what and so if you negate or you get no like a whole lot okay all right so let's start with serious business the negation that is not we are taking them one after the other and we treat all of them the negation of a statement is the offset of the statement so it uses what not so if i have let's say um, let's give an example let p be defined as what it will rain today it means that if i say it will rain today the negation of p is what not p which is given as what it will not rain today so this is very simple right so the negation of just this statement is what you call the not of the statement let k be we will not come home so we will not come home 
So it becomes not not, and that will become what positive. So it's like the negation of this is we will come home. Okay, so you call something truth table. The truth table is also a table that you can use to determine the truth value of a certain statement. So like I said, if I'm giving a single statement like P, then the possible um, truth values that I can combine is so true and false. So I just write my P in the first column. And I consider when, when, T is, sorry, when P is true. And I consider a time where P is what false. Then if P is true, then the negation of P will give me what false. But if P is false, the negation of P will give me what true. Same thing like this. Here, this this side, this down here. Let's look at the Q. Q was already in the in the false statement that you will not come home. You, sorry, you will not come home. And then so the negation of it will give me what a true value, which is what we will come home. I hope this is cool, right? So that is it. Now let's look at the conjunction. That is the and. The and or you can call end if you want to put, uh, pronounce it that way the end of two statements is what true only when both statements are true if you remember we said the end acts on two statements and so if you act this or if you operate this logical operator on two statements then the truth value after express, expressing your what your logical terms and everything will always be true whenever the two statements are true now example giving two statements p and q then we look at this this table okay so look at this table um, carefully I have p he said if you have two statements how many possible truth values can you have he said four okay so it's two to the four the number of statements so p and q are the statements so Two to the power two, which is four. So four, I have to for the four, I have to divide it evenly for these two. So we consider a case where p is true and q is also true. A case where p is true and q is false. A case where q is sorry, p is false and q is true. A case where p is false, q is also false. So in other words, if you want to draw this logical um or truth table, this is how you go about. You write your p, you write your q. If you know that the number of truth values are four, you just divide it and give half to the truth and half to the false in the first statement. So under P, I write true, true, false, false. And when I come to the Q, I just write true, false, true, false. Okay, and this will give me all the possible combinations. So now, this is it P and Q. Okay. We are saying that this is always true whenever both statements are true so p and q here p is true q is true so you give me what is true and it's false otherwise i should have written here it's false otherwise so when p is true and q is false i'll give a false i'll, I'll have a false when i use the and so it's like this p and q when p is true q is false it's false when p is false q is true is false when both are false is false all right let's look at the practical example and then you understand so look at here i have my p to be what i will eat pizza and q to be i will drink soda so now then p and q is only true if i do both and false if i fail to do one or i fail to do both look at here i'll eat pizza i'll drink soda if I say that um, I will eat pizza and I will drink soda, look at it, think about it clearly. I will eat pizza and I will drink soda. Then it means that, let's say I'm going for an, an occasion and I say that during that occasion I will eat pizza and I will drink soda. If I eat pizza and I also drink soda, then what I said or whoever I said that thing to, I've, 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 I've um, accomplished what I said to the person. So it's like, it's a true thing or the outcome is true. I was able to accomplish. So it's like a true thing, a correct thing that I did. But let's say I go to the occasion. I tell you that I'll go to an occasion and join the occasion. I'll eat pizza and I'll drink soda. Let's say I don't eat pizza. Then I drink soda. Probably whatever I told you, I didn't accomplish it. So it's a force. Like, it's like, I couldn't do it. 
that's why we say force okay so let's say i eat the pizza and i don't i, I don't drink soda that means to you that i told you that let's say after going for that program i'll eat pizza and i'll drink soda i, I couldn't do it so to you you mark me down okay that's why we call we, we say force now when let's say i go to the same program then i'm not able to eat pizza and i drink soda to the same person the same person will mark me down let's say you you you've gone for a challenge that um let's say um when when i write these exams um i'll write let's say there's an exam coming okay so we say i'll write mathematics and i'll write english to your mom your mom or your mother then you write mathematics and you don't write english then to your mom you deceive her so in other words it's like it's a force to your mom okay but if you do both then it's true like to your mom he, she will give you a thumbs up okay so that is it all right let's look at the disjunction the all the all of two statements is false only when both statements are false so it means that you only get the the final answer to be false when both statements are false but it will be true always in the other way around okay so let's look at giving two statements p and q this is a true table okay p given as this q given as that so from this definition let's look at it we are saying that it's only false when both statements are false so let's look at it down here you have p being false q being false then p or q this is a symbol for the all okay p or q is false from the definition we are saying that when both statements are false it's false then it will be true otherwise or in another way all right so if both statements are true it's true if both statements are sorry if one statement is true and the other one is false it's true if one if one statement is false and the other one is true it's true and this one we know it's from the definition so let's look at this example so i'll eat pizza the first statement is p is such that i'll eat pizza and q is such that i'll drink soda then p or q p or q is only false if i don't do both and true if i do one or i do both so let, let's look at here i tell you that oh this this um, um this program that is coming off um, you asked me um bro mike um when you go for this party will you eat pizza or or what food will you take Let, let's put it that way and i tell you that oh i'll either eat pizza or i'll drink soda so i'll eat pizza or i'll drink soda so if i eat one of them you know it's true like what i've done I, I've, I've been able to accomplish what i told you it's not necessarily that i should do both okay but let's say i eat both of them that one too is true i hope you understand that's why we say if you have true true the p or q should give me true if i do one and i don't do the other there's no problem because i say either i can do i'll do this or i'll do that so if i tell you let's like, say i'm going to the university and i go to the university i'll do mathematics or i'll do chemistry then i'm able to do the both of them so you you're okay if i do one of them you are still okay okay but if i don't do any of them then it means what i told you i've lied to you i hope you understand right so that is a false statement okay all right let's move on so some true or false questions okay so if i have some statements here i'm supposed to say this statement is true or is false so the first one is this from logic that we've done the small one that we've done when p is true the compound statement p and q is true i'm taking it again so when p is true the compound statement p and q is true true or false the answer is false because let's go back to our um, table when p is true and q is true the compound statement p and q is true but when p is true and q is false compound statement p and, p and q is false so here they said they just gave us only p value that when p is true so it can be any of these and they didn't specify what q so it means what they are saying it can when p is true the compound statement p and q can be true only when q is true and it will be false when q is false 
but here they didn't specify the value for q so all that they said was when p is true the compound statement this is so and this the end we said is only true when both are true so we can't just consider only this and say this statement is true i hope you understand it so this answer is false now if the compound statement p and q is true then q is true think about it we said this statement is only true when both are true so if this is true then obviously we are saying that q is true all right this is true the answer is true now the compound statement p and q is always true whenever q is true think about it compound statement p and q is always true whenever q is true the answer is false okay because let's go back here and see something we are saying that this statement is always true whenever q is true come look at this side this side q was true but p and then p was false so you can sometimes draw this table and then it will guide you okay so here p and q was false whilst q was true so it means that not um it is not that always when q is true p and q is what true no when q is true and p is true then p and q we are saved that is true and we are certain to so that is it okay that is false now let's look at the four the fourth one whenever q is true whenever q is true look at this p or q is true true or false whenever q is true p or q is true true or false it's true because you're saying that this this operator or um if uh, either one of them is true the um the compound statement p or q will be what true so this is true now p or q is always true whenever either one of the statements is true yes i just said it so it's true all right so let's look at the negation of and and not all the negation of and is called none and this is false only when both p and q are both true okay so negation of and that is the none is false only when both p and q are true i will explain this okay so this is how it is the NAND means after finding your p and q negate whatever value you have or whatever answer that you had for here so you know how to get these right so after finding p and q i got true false false true now if i negate this it means the not of true is the opposite of true which is false the not of this is true the not of this is true the not of so if you look at the answers for NAND here it's only false here when both p and q are true so when p and q are true look at here true true the p and q will give me a true but the not of it will give me a false you can keep all these things in mind and so from the truth table it is seen clearly that not p and q is only false when both p and q are true now let's look at the no the negation of no negation of sorry the negation of all negation of all is called null and this is true only when both p and q are false there is a typo here negation of all is called null and this is true only when p both p and q are false let's look at the table so this p or q you know how to do it right in our previous slides that we, we went through now if i negate this if i negate true i'll get false if i negate this look at the place where we had true this is true only when both p and q are out false so you can think of you know the none and the no they are of opposite you know way um way because you are seeing that the none is only false or is false only when both p and q are true and we are saying that the no is true only when both p and q are false so you can keep them in mind so from the truth table it's seen clearly that this and not of the compound statement p or q is only true when 
both P and Q are false. So let's look at the implication. So the implication of two statements P implies this Q, read as P implies Q, or if P then Q is always true whenever Q is true. And also true when both P and Q are false. Look at it clearly. We are saying it is P implies Q is always true whenever Q is true. And also when both P and Q are false. So it is be it will be always true whenever Q is true and always true whenever P and Q are false. Let's look at uh, um, <clears throat> some example and then you understand. Suppose that I have P such that I will eat pizza and Q I will drink soda. Then P implies Q means if I will eat pizza, then I will drink soda. So look at it like you are going for a party and then you are saying that if when you go to the party, if you eat pizza, then you will probably or definitely eat soda, which is true. If you accomplish this, if you eat pizza and then you drink soda, then if if you eat pizza and you drink pizza, um, sorry, you drink soda, then this is true. But if I will not eat pizza, okay, then I will drink soda. If I will not drink, sorry, if I will not eat pizza, then I will drink soda. This is this makes sense. Like I don't know if you get it, but someone asks you like, so what what will you eat during this party? Then you say, if I will not eat pizza. I'll probably drink soda. This is true. This is actually true. Okay. Look at here too. The next one. If I will eat pizza, then I will not drink soda. This is false. This is false. Um, from the definition, we are saying that this is true whenever Q is true. Okay. So when Q is false, here looking at here is like. P is true because look at P. P is I'll eat pizza straight away. It's the same thing. I'll eat pizza. But what is Q? Q is I'll drink soda. But here is I will not drink. So it means the negation of Q. And so if let's say this is the true one, the negation will give me false. So here is false. This is false. Mm -hmm. So that is it. Okay. So if I will not eat pizza, then I will not drink soda. This also makes sense. Like he told them that. Okay. If I want to eat pizza and drink soda. Then they tell you that if on, you, you tell them if only I drink pizza, sorry, if only I eat pizza, I'll drink soda. Then um, they come and tell you that there's no pizza, there's no drink or soda here. So you can tell them that if I will not eat pizza, then I won't drink soda. This also makes sense. This is true. I hope you understand. And the uh, the third part. If I will eat pizza, then I will not drink soda. This is for because you told someone that I'll eat pizza. If I'll eat pizza, then I will drink soda. So if you don't, sorry, if you eat pizza and you don't, this this is like um um a necessary condition for this that you are saying that if I will eat pizza, then I will drink soda. So it means that. Once you are able to accomplish this, you must accomplish this as well for this statement to be true. Okay, that is how the English and uh, mean. So it means that if I will eat pizza, then I will not drink soda. Then this evaluates this st statement, so it makes everything false. Let's go and look at the truth table. So this this is the thing. We are saying that it is always true whenever Q is true. So we find a place where Q is true and we put true there. So P implies Q. This Q is true, so here, here will be true. This Q is true, so here will be true. And now we are saying that it's also true whenever both statements are false. Yes, it's indeed true. So, like the last example we saw, we saw, I will not eat pizza. You told someone already that I will eat pizza. Then, if I will eat pizza, then I will drink soda. And the person don't get you pizza and soda. Then that is also true. So if I will not eat pizza, then I will not drink soda. This is also true. Okay, so the false 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 implies false is true. This this in everyday life you we do it all the time. Okay, so that is it. So in other words, 
whenever you have p implies q look at where q is true and assign true to them and look at where they are both false and it's true as well any other thing is false okay to solve the following true or false questions your compound statement p implies q is true whenever q is true true or false you are saying that p implies q is always true whenever q is what is true look at the place where q is true what's our final answer is true this place is true so it means this statement is what true the compound statement p implies q is true whenever p is true you will come come to where p is true i have true here this is correct where p is true here i have false here so it means this statement is what false so in the definition you should know by now that this statement will always provide or produce a truth statement whenever q is true okay so if q is true then a compound statement p implies q is true this is true right so if q is true and a compound statement this implies q is true all right so the by implication the by implication of two statements p by implies q read as p if and only if q or p if q is always true whenever both p and q are true and both are false so this time it's all only true when both are true and both are false so this is like you have to do the implies condition to the first one that is p implies q then you look at q implies p so it's like forward and backward okay so looking at it that way then it means the only thing that can make this statement true is when p and q are true and p and q are false all right so thank you and then in our next video we'll actually look at um some big formulas i'm sorry some big terms like tautology um, contingency and the rest okay so thank you and see you next time subscribe to my channel